Hello everybody and welcome back. Well, of course it's a long weekend in the US and that's meant that stock markets haven't been open, but that doesn't mean that the action stops. Futures markets are still trading and at the moment they're going back down. Is that what they're going to do though for the week ahead or are they coming into a point of support very, very soon? We'll take a look at stocks, cryptos and commodities and more in today's video. So much to discuss and plenty of markets making moves. See you soon. Well, welcome back everybody to the channel where we talk about stocks, cryptos and commodities daily. And if you like any of those markets, make sure to subscribe and of course, give us a like button if you find value in today's video. The best thing to do is to start off by talking about whether we're in oversold territory anymore, the middle or overbought. And at this point, a 50 day moving average spread for the S&P 500, that is how many stocks are above or below the 50 day moving average can help us get an idea of whether the market's extremely overbought or extremely oversold. It was one of the defining factors that allowed us on this channel and all of us to together figure out that the bottom was in currently. But of course, where we are right now is the middle of nowhere land. Do we move back up into the overboard, extreme overboard zone like so many times before? That seems like a very big possibility. And of course, at this point, we're trying to figure out what are our best next moves. Well, let's take a look right now together at some of the things that are going on in the market as we see them leading into the Tuesday open. The first one is the volatility or the VIX has of course dropped. This dropped on Friday and it hit to a level that was pretty unique, 25. Now with the VIX, every five counts. That is 25, 30, 20. All of these levels are really important. Underneath 20 is considered a normalized market. Above 20 is considered a fearful market. And you usually want to trade the, or change the type of trades that you usually place when the VIX goes up. You might want to, instead of being a stock picker, focus on the S&P 500 and indices like we do in lead indicators here on the channel. If the market is fearful, that's what you want to be doing. And as the market gets more and more fearful, that is it goes above a 30, you'll actually trade the instruments that you might be looking at. Something that we talk about in the mentoring course, and it's something that I think is really important because if we don't understand that, then we might be stuck in the wrong trades. And if you've ever asked yourself that question, why did I do that trade or why is this going so wrong? It can often be towards the level of volatility that's currently in markets. You've got to slightly change and tweak your style. So VIX sitting at 25, it is a bit of a support and you'll notice here it's previously shown some kind of risk coming back in. So 25 is a massive level. A breach underneath here should lead us back into 20 and of course stabilization leading back into a zone that we hope to reach, which will be really along our current concept here, which is a rally led by possibly a nice short that's gonna come through in the markets. Let's take a look at a couple of other lead indicators. We've got Dr. Copper here. A lot of people look at copper as being a lead economic health indicator. It's stabilized after what was a pretty incredible fall. And again, it just kind of simplifies our lives to saying, okay, well, maybe the markets aren't as sick as everybody seems to think they are at this stage. Copper's not falling through the floor. That's a good sign because that shows us demand for economic activity. The US 10-year has risen again here in the last couple of days of trade. So the futures market has sent it higher. That really shows us that the market is possibly starting to see a little bit more inflation. You can see the holding pattern down here. That is equilibrium through the dojis. It broke to the upside. And it's not unexpected, but I guess it will probably come up a little bit and then hopefully turn around again. We'll continue to update you on the US 10 year because if it does breach below this low, which you can see is so important, then that bodes very well for the stock market. And hopefully it does continue to do so. Let's look at the dollar index as well. The dollar index has turned at the same time and started to move back up. We've been calling bearishness on it and I'm still a bear here on the DXY for now, the US dollar. And that's because in general, it has been declining, but will it start to rally? Well, that's the question a lot of people are asking. Here, I would say, yes, you're starting to see the signs of rally. Changes of trend in some ways, obviously a breach of this just underneath 102 will be a big deal for the dollar index. And I think it will start to move higher. And it's because it's become quite oversold in recent weeks. Ever since it started dropping here, it's really just sold, 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 and sold. Does it need to pull up? Yeah, I think somewhere around that 103 or even the 102.50 would be a pretty interesting area for the market to come back to 
and then to move around. And it's consistent with what we're seeing in the current futures action. That is a weakness in the S&P 500 and NASDAQ leading into the Tuesday open. Let's move over to gold. Gold also weakening off that point. We've got our defended zone just below here. And there was a great Monday trade on that line that I just had here. There was a fantastic Monday Asia open area if you went and broke that down. Very good trade, cool little separate zone inside of it. And gold still is currently showing bullish tendencies on certain time frames, but it just started to switch here on this time frame. So it looks like it could be in a holding pattern. A breach below 1840, that's gonna be very negative towards gold and it could really fall through there at that point. I could see it even going down into the low 1800s again especially with the DXY, what it might do. But if it starts, if it holds above 1840, breaches to a new high, this all becomes what they call distribution or accumulation and effectively we move higher. So I think it's in a holding pattern for now. Gold looks really good on certain timeframes towards the bull side, but I'd like to see a new peak taken out. So let's see if that can happen over the next couple of days. Now, one that might surprise some is oil. Now I've obviously been negative on oil recently, not to do with the TA, it's got nothing to do with that, but I have explained that my process has got nothing to do with the right now. It's got to do with the next couple of months two or three months away is what I'm thinking here on oil. Now, if I'm looking at this on the surface, of course, we've seen a series of higher lows, a lot of congestion in here and it breached out. Plus with the news of, of course, what's happening in Euro, it's, it's moving up. I'm still a bit concerned about the oil trade. I know a lot of you guys won't agree with me, but you know, I've got a longer term approach here and I'm not necessarily pulling the trigger either way. But I do think that this could be false um, and we'll find out whether we're, we're true or not soon. It has broken through. Technical analysis would detail that the next move you would think is upwards of into those 124s again for the oil market. Let's find out whether that can happen. Go to the smaller time frames, understand the structural formation. And at this stage, it's making a series of higher lows, breaching through, it consolidated just above here and there was probably a pretty good trade for many through that Monday session. So. Oil holding up, natural gas, however, still showing signs of weakness. So still showing that kind of topping phase of this particular one. Remember they call it the widow maker for a reason. It does look pretty weak here on the, the daily when I look at it, those double rejections. It kind of tried to rally at this stage. Natural gas still looks a little bit more bearish than something like oil. If we now move over to the indices though, this is where interesting stuff starts to occur. So tech, check out these indices. Well. The NASDAQ hit a perfect level. It was actually a zone that I was talking with my private community about yesterday and I was saying like, I don't like this zone. This is an area that I expect resistance. Now, it just so happened that it hit into that during, of course, the futures market action. So where are the turnaround points for this market? Well, one of them actually tends to be down in here and there was another one that potentially could have been here and you can see why the market reacts to that initially. So we're in the middle of nowhere land. In this area, we look for a few things. We're in the futures market, obviously. If it starts to structure and form like through here, so let's say before the open, we get a formation like this, and then we breach out, fantastic. The market's actually done what it was meant to do, and it's looking towards the next move upwards of that 13.5 zone, which is a big critical level we'll talk about soon. But the other alternative is that the market tries to come back down and hits the roll reversal area. So here we have previous resistances. We know there are a lot of orders in this area. This is around that 12.6 zone. That would be a perfect level for the market to come back down and to find demand, to find buyers coming back into this market. What do you guys think in the comments down below? Do you think this is the end of the rally or do you think that rally is gonna come back down and be met by buyer demand? Here's the NASDAQ thought process. Now, why we're focusing so much on this area up here is because when we move over to the NDQ, so always do your analysis with the real market and the futures market, you'll notice that there are certain things that are, that are still in these areas. So notice up here on the left-hand side, what have we got? A monstrous gap. And that gap is yet to be filled. So that sits around that 13, 4, 13, 5 area. Now we've filled the other gaps, but we have a gap here that was just formed recently, where you can see it, it came out of the gates very strong. So eventually that might wanna fill. And of course, we've currently filled this one over here which was sitting for a little while. So gap fills do tend to occur eventually and you look for them as kind of areas where price moves so quickly that it might wanna come back to. So the ultimate rally here would obviously be to push into this level and then we find out whether the bears are truly in control. 
But before that, there's going to be some, you know, funny business. We could move back down in the futures market, which makes the most amount of sense, come and clip this area, possibly even spike that to clean it up and then move forward. That's very, very possible. So you've got to remember this area around here is going to be important in the future. And of course, this area here, which is where we were just on Friday and the current market sitting around here could be a good point where structural formation could occur. And then of course we move further back up. So the NASDAQ, look at it two ways, guys. Look at the real market, the QQQ or the NDQ. I like using the NDQ code because I, I find that better than the ETF. Uh, but then of course, on top of that, you can use the futures market and check out where those levels are. Let's move over to the US 500. Again, this is really the big key one and it's coming into an area that I already like for it. And that was a previous resistance that had a lot of orders, I believe, sitting around it. And the market just, the futures market just stomped straight through it, went to 4,200 and now it's pulling back into this boxed range. What would I like to see here? Formation, that is, a lightning bolt, a double bottom, some kind of change of trend in this and the smaller time frames. If we see nice structure formation ahead of the Tuesday open around here, could be very, very strong. Where are the next levels? Down here, here. These are the three zones that I'm looking for to see the turnaround for the bull side, if the bull side is going to occur. Again, why do we like this level up here? There's a gap there. That's the previous resistance. And I think a lot of people know that 4,300 or 4,290 is a big deal here on markets. And I believe that markets will try to gravitate towards that. Because even if we take things like the double bottom down here and we take that distance and we extrapolate that out, you'll notice it comes just to completing above it. So could it be very, very similar to what happened last time where we rallied, we rallied back to a fib. So let's take the fib here. Here's the market, here's the fib. So we rallied back to a 61.8. The 61.8 is exactly where that double bottom is, see that? And if we think about last time, where did it go? It went the 61.8 fib plus a little bit and it took that top off, got a lot of rally in of course, and then started its lightning bolt, started the change of trend all the way back down. So these are some scenarios that I think are moving forward for both the longer term trader, well, the next couple of week trader and the person that's looking at the Tuesday open. We've got big box areas. We want structures to form in over this week for the rallies. And if rallies are gonna come in, these are the levels that need to be kind of supported. They need to be found with buyers in them. Otherwise, the bears really will get control of this market. It seems like this will be the area that the total battle happens. But we don't know that yet. We just, of course, are speculating that that makes the most amount of sense with, of course, the movement of the double bottom potentially taking out these highs before that false kind of market move with a potential sell through that zone. I'm not convinced this is necessarily the rally that ends all rallies. Let's have a look at some other markets. We'll look at the DAX here. And you'll notice this DAX, very, very strong, still holding up pretty nicely. And of course, this market is open in comparison to the US. So again, very, very strong here in the more value play. It kind of gives me hope here in the US market as well that things are possibly improving. And it's at that resistance where the previous wick here in April sold off. Notice that the DAX, that is the German market, is actually almost back to where it was and it's actually outperforming at this stage, really the US. The US and tech is not performing anywhere near as well and that's of course because this dropped so heavily, but it's it's found really a nice space. Another market that's doing really well is my one here in Australia. It's it's really tapped into inflation. We have so many great inflation-based companies, oil, commodities, you know, we've got of course metals and we have banks. So realistically, because this market has all those things, it always rebounds harder at this stage. We're at 72.64, you could see where the pullback could occur, back down into this very heavy zone here around 7,200 and then potentially even a move to 74 or even 76 again. So there are different markets in the world and I thought I'd bring them to you today just so you can see that, yes, the US market's the best market in the world. I love it very much. But on top of that, there are other choices out there for markets. Let's move over to XLY, XLP. What did it show us on Friday? It just kind of showed us a little bit of risk on. So as we see here, here's the bottom base. Here's of course the potential breach out. And I'd be liking to see that happen again through the Tuesday session. If that occurred, then we might have some further risk on. And again, it means probably that technology will outperform in this current rally 
on the way up. And that's what we've been saying here for about a week together as a community. Bitcoin, big move for it, hit 32,000, instantly rejected that zone. I've told you guys for a while that 32,000 is the big area here. Really nice kind of max paying creation here with that movement up. You can see here the, the series of downward trend that it breached through. And that really started that kind of rally. Yeah, Bitcoin's done pretty well. 32,000 is a big deal for it. I, I feel like it's struggling with that a little bit and rightfully so. We can see that there's a lot of supply over here and a lot of resting orders. It tapped it, selling off. I wouldn't be surprised for it to come back down to this range and then try to have a go at it again. Hopefully it can, because if it breaches through here, you might get a nice relief rally in Bitcoin and that will be met, of course, with the rest of the market. For the week ahead, of course, come and follow us over in our Discord channel. Links down in the description below. Join the public Discord or the private Discord free seven-day trial. Come and join us as well at FX Evolution on Twitter. And just remember the economic news coming out. We do have economic news. So if you scroll through, this week's important is jobs numbers. So USD, here we have the American news, ISM manufacturing PMI, 10 a.m. New York time, jolts job openings. Then we've got the first ADP non-employment change. Usually that doesn't do too much to the market. So this one, I don't worry about too much. It's often a bit of fake news, I guess you'd say. And then down here, we've got the big number, non-farm employment change coming out 8.30 a.m. on the Friday. Make sure you're there and you're very, very, very aware of the risks. Non-farm loves to go one direction and then go the opposite direction a few minutes later. So be careful of the trade around those points. For anyone that's never watched a non-farm, you need to watch quite a few of them to see how it reacts, but it's a big bit of volatility and the market loves to come out and trap traders into making rash decisions or take out their stop losses. So be aware of that, guys. Thanks so much. Subscribe if you enjoyed the content. We'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.